시간이 있을 때뭘 해요? Hello everyone and welcome back to Quick Korean. Today we will be studying the section 시간이 있을 때뭘 해요? or what do you like to do in your free time? The topic of today's lesson is hobbies. We will learn vocabulary related to hobbies and the grammar points 을때 and 티긋 irregular verbs. After studying this lesson, you will be able to talk about your hobbies in Korean. Lastly, in the culture section, we will explore parks in Korea. Well then, let's get started. First, listen carefully to today's dialogue. In today's dialogue, Jimin is talking with her friend at the park. They are talking about their hobbies. What do you suppose their hobbies are? Let's listen to the conversation and find out. So, were you able to understand their conversation? What is Jimin's hobby? Right, it's picture taking. What about Jimin's friend? Now, before taking a closer look at the conversation, let's first look at the vocabulary and grammar that come out in the dialogue. 1st is the vocabulary section for this lesson. Our first word here is 뭘. Please follow along and repeat after me. 뭘. 뭘. Now this word here, 뭘, is just a shortened form of 무엇을. So, if you look here, I could ask you about this person, 뭘 해요? Or, what is he doing? And as you can see in this picture, he's studying. And I could ask you again about this situation right here. I could ask, 뭘 해요? And then you could probably say, he's listening to music. And in the last picture here, I could ask again, 뭘 해요? And you'd probably say, he's playing tennis. Now let's go ahead and say this word together one more time. 뭘. Now our next word here is 취미. Please follow along and repeat after me. 취미. 취미. Now in this picture here, these people have time. So this person here plays table tennis, this person here paints, this person here builds a figure, and this person here is climbing. Now these are all done for fun. So these activities here are examples of hobbies, or in Korean we would say 취미. Now let's go ahead and say the word together one more time. 취미. Now our next word here is 음악 감상. Please follow along and repeat after me. 음악 감상. 음악 감상. Now this person here listens to music. She appreciates music, or in Korean we could say 음악을 감상해요. So what is her hobby? Well, then that would make her hobby music appreciation, or in Korean 음악 감상. Now let's go ahead and say the word together one more time. 음악 감상. Now our next word here is 신나다. Please follow along and repeat after me. 신나다. 신나다. Now take a look at this picture here. Jimin is listening to music and she's dancing. It looks like Jimin is excited, or in Korean we would say 신났어요. Now the music is bringing about excitement, or is 신나는 음악. Now let's go ahead and say the word together one more time. 신나다. Now our next word here is 사진 찍기. Please follow along and repeat after me. 사진 찍기. 사진 찍기. Now this picture here, Jinsu is on a trip. And as you can see here, He's taking pictures with his camera. So, what would you suppose his hobby is? Right, it looks like it is taking pictures, or in Korean we would say, 사진 찍기. 
So let's go ahead and say the word one more time. 사진 찍기. Now our next word here is 가지고 가다. Please follow along and repeat after me. 가지고 가다. 가지고 가다. Now Mr. Lee is in this place right here. And you can see that he is carrying documents in his hand in this place. Now he's about to go to some other place and he takes the documents with him. So in Korean we could say 서류를 가지고 가다. So in other words, he took the documents to another place. Now let's go ahead and say the word together one more time. 가지고 가다. Now let's review the words that we just learned in this section. Now what is the shortened form of 무엇을? Right, it is 뭘. Now in their free time, these people, they play table tennis, paint, build figures, and climb. So these are all done for fun. So what are these examples of? Right, they are examples of 취미 or hobbies. Now here, she listens to music when she has time. What do you suppose her hobby is? Right, it is 음악 감상 or music appreciation. Now here, Jimin is listening to music and dancing. How do you suppose she feels right now? Right, we would say 신나다. Now here, Junsu is taking pictures with his camera. What do you suppose his hobby is? Right, it is 사진 찍기 or taking pictures. Now here, Mr. Lee, you can see right here, went from this place to another place. And you can see that he takes these documents with him. So in Korean, we could say 서류를 가지고 가다. 서류를 가지고 가요. Excellent! Now, let's take a closer look at the dialogue for this section. In today's dialogue, Jimin is talking with her friend in the park. What are they talking about? Well, they're talking about each other's hobbies. What do you suppose Jimin and Jimin's friend's hobbies are? Well, let's take a look. So Jimin starts off by asking, 시간이 있을 때 뭘 해요? Or she's asking, what do you do when you have time? So what do people usually do in their free time? They like to do things that they enjoy. Or you could see that she's asking about her hobby. So how does her friend respond? Well, she responds by talking about her hobby. She says, 제 취미는 음악 감상이에요. 신나는 음악을 자주 들어요. So, what is her hobby? Well, we have the word hobby here, and her hobby is 음악 감상. Now, what is 음악 감상? Well, it's, remember, it's music appreciation. So, what does that involve? That involves listening to music or 음악을 자주 들어요. So now, what type of music does her friend like to listen to? Well, we have it up here. 신나는 music, or music that excites her. So, what about Jimin? What's her hobby? Well, she says, 저는 사진 찍기를 좋아해요. So, what's her hobby? Well, we have it right here. 사진 찍기. And if you remember, that's taking pictures. Now, she also adds, 그래서 여행 갈때 카메라를 꼭 가지고 가요. So, she says here, when she travels, she always makes sure to take her camera. So, after, upon hearing this, Jimin's friend says, 그럼 다음에 만날 때 사진 좀 보여주세요. So, she wants 
her to show her her pictures. When? You can see here, 다음에 만날 때. Or when they meet next time. Great. So now, let's go ahead and take a look at the grammar for this section. Our first grammar point here is 울 때. Now, this 울 때 is used to express the time or moment a certain action happens. You can think of it at, in English as when something, then something. So, I think it'll be clear once we go over this. So, let's take a look at an example. Our first example here is 시간이 있을 때 뭘 해요? Recall, this is what Chimin asked to her friend. So, let's look at the back part here. We have 뭘 해요? Or, what do you do? Now, when is she asking, what does she do? Well, if we look at the front part, we have 시간 있다, or to have time. So you can see, by adding this 울 때 here, and we get, we get 시간이 있을 때, or when you have time. And now, when com by combining this, we have 시간이 있을 때 뭘 해요? So in other words, when you have time, what do you do? Now, let's go ahead and read through the sentence together. Please repeat after me. 시간이 있을 때 뭘 해요? Great. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at another example. Our next example here is 배가 아플 때이 약을 드세요. So again, let's look at the back part first. What do we have? 이 약을 드세요. Or, take this medicine. Now, when is this person supposed to take the medicine? Well, let's look at the front part. What do we have? We have 배가 아프다. Or, when your stomach isn't feeling well. So, 배가 아프다, stomach doesn't feel well, is the time. So, by adding this 때 here, 울 때, we get 배가 아플 때, which means when you have a stomach ache or when your stomach doesn't feel well. Then, by combining this all together, we get 배가 아플 때이 약을 드세요. So, in other words, when your stomach isn't feeling well, take this medicine. Now, let's go ahead and read through the sentence together. Please repeat after me. 배가 아플 때이 약을 드세요. Excellent. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the usage in greater detail. Now, here you could see that this 울 때 is used together with verbs such as, you can see it with 있다 and 아프다. So, let's first take a look at the first verb here, 있다, and what do you notice? 있다 ends in a consonant here. So, when we have a verb that ends in a consonant, we add this 울 때. So, in this case, when we have 있다, we add the 울 때, and what do we get? We get 있을 때. Now, what about the second example here? We have 아프다, and as you can see, it does not end in a consonant, it ends in a vowel. So, in that case, what we do is we add this final du sound, and 때, and when we combine them, what happens is you can think of this going into this empty spot here, and what we get is 아플 때. Now, let's go ahead and read through these examples together. Please repeat after me. 있다, 있을 때, 아프다, 아플 때. Well done. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the next grammar point. Our next grammar point here is 디귿 불규칙 동상. So, we saw this a little earlier, right? A similar one in the last lesson. Now, in Korean, we have this Recall, this is the tu sound. And the name of this consonant in Korean is tigut. And if you recall, this pulgyuchik here just means irregular. And tongsa here means verb. So what we're looking at here is tigut, irregular verbs. So now, what's a tigut irregular verb? So a tigut irregular verb is a verb that ends in tigut. And when it's followed by a vowel, the tigut changes into a ryul or the or the ryu sound. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. Our first example here is 신나는 음악을 자주 들어요. So let's take our focus on this 들어요 right here. Now 들어요, the basic form of 들어요 is 듣다. So notice this ends in a 
t-gut right here. And how do we form this? Well, you can see here, we add the oil. Now, what do you notice? This t-gut here is followed by this o here, this vowel sound. So what happens is, this t-gut here changes to a li and what happens is, we get what we get here, tu oil, like this. Now let's go ahead and read the sentence together. Please repeat after me. 신난, 신나는 음악을 자주 들어요. Great. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another example. Our next example here is 지나가는 사람에게 길을 물었어요. Now again, let's take our focus and look at this 물었어요. Now where does this come from? Well, the basic form of this verb is 묻다, which, if you recall, means to ask. And how did we form this? Well, this is formed by taking 묻다 and adding 어서요 to show that this takes place in the past. And what do you notice? Well, it ends in a t-gut here, and when we combine it, it's met by this 어 right here, which is a vowel sound. So what happens is, when this tigot meets this vowel sound, the tigot down here changes to a lir or the r sound. And what ends up happening is what we get is this murosoyo, as you can see down here. Now let's go ahead and read through the sentence together. Please repeat after me. 지나가는 사람에게 길을 물었어요. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the usage in greater detail. Now, as you can see here, tigut irregular verbs are ones like tutta and mutta, as you can see here. Now, what happens? Again, recall, if the tigut there meets a vowel sound, the tigut actually changes into a lir or r sound. So, as you can see, in the first example, we have tutta and it meets oyo. So, here you can see it ends in this tigut and it meets this oyo. So this is a vowel sound. So what happens is, because this meets this vowel sound, this changes into a dir sound, and the result is this turoyo, as you can see up here. Now what about the second example? We have mutta, and as you can see, this also ends in a tigut right here. And what is it combined with? This osoyo. So you can see, this osoyo here starts with a vowel sound, so again, when this here meets the vowel sound, it changes to a lir sound. And what results is we get 물었어요. Now let's go ahead and read through these examples one more time. Please repeat after me. 듣다 들어요. 묻다 물었어요. Well done. Now let's go ahead and take another listen to the dialogue for this section. Now, let's take another look at the dialogue. This time, let's read through it together. Listen and repeat after me. 시간이 있을 때뭘 해요? 제 취미는 음악 감상이에요. 신나는 음악을 자주 들어요. 저는 사진 찍기를 좋아해요. 그래서 여행 갈때 카메라를 꼭 가지고 가요. Chrome, 다음에 만날 때 사진 좀 보여주세요. Now, let's go through the dialogue again. This time, you read the role of Jimin's friend. 시간이 있을 때 뭐래요? 
저는 사진 찍기를 좋아해요. 그래서 여행 갈때 카메라를 꼭 가지고 가요. 제 취미는 음악 감상이에요. 신나는 음악을 자주 들어요. Well done. Now it's time for speaking practice. In this section, we will practice using 을때, which we learned a little earlier. Now in this exercise, we will look at the picture and complete the sentence. So as you can see in the sentence here, we have 우산, which means umbrella, and 장화, which means rubber boots. And you can see in the back, 사용해요, or they are being used. Now, when do you use these items? Well, when it rains or 비가 오다. So then how would we make this into a sentence using 을때? In other words, how would we say, I use my umbrella and rubber boots when it rains? Right, we would say, 비가 올때 우산과 장화를 사용해요. Now here, in the sentence here, we have 운동복, which means like workout clothes, and 운동화, which are uh, tennis shoes, and you can see back here, it says 필요해요, or to need. So, when do you need these items? Well, when they exercise or 운동하다. So then, how would we use 을때 to make a sentence? In other words, how would we say they need their workout clothes and tennis shoes when they exercise? Right, we would say 운동할 때 운동복과 운동화가 필요해요. Now, in this sentence, we have 국자, which means ladle, and 냄비, which is a pot, and again, our verb here is 필요해요, or to need. So, in this picture, when does Mrs. Kim need these items? Right, when she cooks, or in Korean, 요리하다. So now, how would we complete the sentence using 을때? Right, we would say, 요리할 때 국자와 냄비가 필요해요. Great! Now let's practice using 디귿 irregular verbs in these speaking exercises. Now, Chi means friend, asks her a question. He asks, 어떤 음악을 좋아해요? Or, what kind of music do you like? Now, Chimin likes 신나는 음악, as you can see here, or music that excites her. Therefore, she often listens, or in Koreans we would say, 듣다. So, how would Chimin respond to her friend? Right, she would say, 신나는 음악을 자주 들어요. Now this time, Hejin asked Chunsu a question. She asks, 어디가 아파요? Or, are you hurting somewhere? Now, Chunsu's legs are hurting, or we could see, 다리가 좀 아파요. Or that her le his legs are hurting a little bit. But why are they hurting? Well, it turns out, Yesterday, Chunzu walked a lot, and in Korean that would be 걷다, which means to walk. So therefore, his legs hurt a bit. So then how would Chunzu respond to Hejin's question? Right, he would say, 어제 많이 걸어서 다리가 좀 아파요. Excellent! 
Now it's time for listening practice. Mr. Kim and Mr. Lee are having a conversation. The two of them are talking about their hobbies. What do you suppose their hobbies are? Listen carefully to their conversation. 부장님은 시간이 있을 때뭘 하세요? 제 취미는 운동이에요. 축구를 자주 해요. 저도 운동을 좋아해요. 그래서 한가할 때 골프를 쳐요. 그럼 다음에 같이 골프 쳐요. Were you able to understand the conversation? Let's answer a few questions to check your understanding. Now our first question here, question number one, asks 누구의 취미예요? Or whose hobby is this? Now first here, we have this soccer player here. In other words, uh, 축구 in Korean, right? So whose hobby is this? Right, it is Mr. Lee's hobby. Now in the second picture here, right here, what is this person doing? Right, playing golf. Now whose hobby is playing golf? Right, that is Mr. Kim's hobby. Now moving on to the next question, question number two asks, 다음에 두 사람은 무슨 운동을 할까요? Or what kind of sport or exercise do you think the two of them will do? Well, our answer choices here are golpu or golf, and suyong, swimming. So what are they going to do together? Right, they play golf together, so the correct answer would be golpu. Well done. Now it's time for the Vocabulary Plus section. In this section, we will take a look at more words related to hobbies. Now our first word here is 독서. Now you can see here, Hejin is reading a book. Now 독서 literally means book reading. Now Hejin also read a book yesterday. She is reading a book today, and later she will read another book. So what do you suppose her hobby is? Right, it is reading, or once again in Korean, 독서. So, Hejin could say, 제 취미는 독서예요. 책을 날마다 읽어요. Which means, my hobby is reading. I read books every day. Now, our next word here is 영화 감상. Now, when he has time, Junzu likes to watch movies. So, what do you suppose his hobby is? Right, movie appreciation, or in Korean we'd say, 영화 감상. So, Junsu could probably say, 제 취미는 영화 감상이에요. Or, my hobby is movie appreciation. Now, our next word here is computer game. So, you can see here, this person is on the computer and playing a game. In fact, she enjoys playing computer games. Now, if she were my younger sister, about her, I could say, 제 동생 취미는 컴퓨터 게임이에요. Or, my younger sister's hobby is playing computer games. Now, our next word here is 그림 그리기. Now, when my friend has time, she paints, as you can see right here. Or in Korean, we would say 그림 그리기. Now, about her, I could say 제 친구 취미는 그림 그리기예요. Or, my friend's hobby is painting. Now, our next word here is 낚시. So, look at the picture. What is he doing? You can see that he's catching fish. So, what do you suppose his hobby is? Right, fishing, or in Korean, we would say 낚시. So, Chunzu could say about his father, 아빠 취미는 낚시예요. Or, my dad's hobby is fishing. Now, our next word here is 요리하기. As you can see in the picture here, he's making food. He's cooking, or in Korean we would say 요리해요. So, it looks like fun. So, what do you suppose his hobby is? Now, 지민 could say about Chunsu. 우리 오빠 취미는 요리하기예요. Or, 
My older brother's hobby is cooking. Excellent. Now, let's practice using the words we just learned using these pictures here. So we have a question being asked. The question is, 취미가 뭐예요? Or, what is the person's hobby? Now, in the first picture, we have Chunzu and he's watching a movie. So, what is his hobby? Right, we would say, 영화 감상이에요. Now, he, what about this picture here? Again, we have the same question, 취미가 뭐예요? Or, what is this person's hobby? Now, as you can see, he's catching fish. So, what is his hobby? Right, it is, 낚시예요. Now, in this last picture here, again, we have the same question, 취미가 뭐예요? Or, what is this person's hobby? So, what is she doing? Well, she's playing computer games. So, what do you suppose her hobby is? Right, we could say, 컴퓨터 게임이에요. Now, let's go through the question and responses one more time. Now, the question here was, 취미가 뭐예요? And if we go through these pictures here, the first one we have is, 영화 감상이에요. And in the middle picture here, we have, 낚시예요. And finally, in the last picture, 컴퓨터 게임이에요. Well done. Finally, it is time for the Korean culture section. Today, we will explore parks in Korea. What kind of parks do you think there are in Korea? And what do you think people do at the park? Let's take a look and find out. 한국의 공원 한국에는 아름다운 자연환경을 잘 보존하여 만든 20여 개의 공립공원이 있으며 도시마다 특색 있는 도시공원이 있습니다. 경치 좋은 산과 강가의 공원에 캠핑을 하며 즐기는 한국인도 있고 인근 공원으로 찾아가 나무와 꽃을 보며 가벼운 운동을 하는 한국인도 있습니다. Now, let's go over what we learned today. Today's topic was hobbies. We learned about vocabulary related to hobbies and the grammar points 을 때, and tigot irregular verbs. Finally, in the culture section, we explored parks in Korea. So, how do you feel? Do you think you can now talk about your hobbies in Korean? Great! Well, this brings us to the end of this lesson. See you next time! <laughs>